Good morning, hyenas. I have a question for you. How do you guys caption your image macros? How do you make your memes? Seems like an easy enough question, right? You take your favorite picture of a frog and you throw some text on it, meme made. Surprisingly though, this means different things to different people. Like for instance, are you one of the people who takes that image of a frog and puts it over black text as if it was the Keanu Reeves meme of him saying balls? Or instead, does your mind climb back to the 4chan days where the picture of the frog is over in the corner and all the lines of text are green? Or instead, does this simple mental exercise result in you imagining a wacky dog doing an uncharacteristic thing? Surprisingly, every single one of these catalysts does result in the end goal of adding text to an image. And yet you might be surprised to learn that every single one of these different stylized versions of an image macro is actually a reflection of the era of the internet in which it was conceived. The earliest recorded examples of image followed by or preceded by text has actually led into the most modern examples of image followed by or preceded by text. And it's because of that I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at the history of such a thing so in today's video, we're gonna be looking through all the examples of how do you caption a meme. We start our analysis by taking a look at demotivational posters, one of the earliest examples that I could think of that has image followed by text. As the name implies, demotivational posters is derived from the widely popular motivational posters that you would see all over people's offices in the late 90s and early 2000s. Motivational posters, obviously, were posters that were designed to motivate you with an awe inspiring image and some sort of quote that would make you feel like the world is your oyster. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with examples like an ocean or a landscape that says something along the lines of motivation, it comes from within. Or perhaps even the ones of a cat hanging from a tree that say, kitty, hang in there like you'd see at your grandma's house. Or that one episode of Scrubs where Elliot destroys her room and then turns goth for an episode. Demotivational posters, as the name should imply, is sort of the opposite. According to KnowYourMeme.com, these are widely credited to a company by the name of Despair Inc. that would make spoofs or parodies of these motivational posters that would look as if they were designed to be a motivational poster, but upon closer inspection of the actual quote that was underneath the image, it would reveal that it was in fact a tongue-in-cheek poke at the fact that there is no motivation to be found at all. Know Your Meme says that these parody spoofs of motivational posters dubbed demotivational posters were widely popular in the late 90s and early 2000s, pre-social media even. That means if you've bumped into one of these images that looks like a poster that you see hanging up in your office, that meme statistically is probably older than you are. The one thing that would date demotivational posters more than anything, despite the fact that it was the tried and true way to caption a meme for many years, was the fact that the image came before the text. And that makes a lot of sense given the fact that the origin of making a poster in such a way probably is derived from the way that you would caption most things outside of the internet. If you ever see an image followed by a caption in a textbook, or if you'd ever see a painting in a museum and then the text underneath it, you see the image first, and then the text explaining the context or the origin of where that image came from comes afterwards. However, as I'm sure you guys can all tell from the way that you see memes nowadays, you need the context first. The text is usually the thing that you read before the image provides you with some sort of personification, some sort of character for you to be able to relate to after understanding the idea that should already be in your head. The text can't come afterwards. Introducing the greatest and probably most underappreciated change in meme culture, we have lolcats, which aside from introducing adorable animals into image macros, now changes it so that the text comes before the image. I mean, technically the text is on top of the image, but you don't need to see the image and then squint to see the text afterwards. They're hand in hand at this point. Lolcats, Limecat, I Can Has Cheeseburger, has been talked to death. We all understand how notable this was in internet culture. This amalgamation of the internet's love for small furry creatures, the silly little childish talk that they had that they dubbed lolcat speak became the personification, the face of what internet culture was. And while it's fantastic that we made the leaps and bounds to make it so that you could read the text without going through the image first, this still didn't provide any sort of personal experience into the meme. Sure, you could take a funny picture of a cat, 
maybe even your own cat. But to make a lol's cat image macro, you basically just had to say something silly that the cat might be thinking. It didn't provide any way for you to share your own personal experience for other people to relate to on the internet. That was until they swapped up the cats to use any other animal with a rainbow background that everybody found attractive and gave birth to advice animals. The popularization of advice animals became the refining point that gave perfect balance between text and image. We've moved from the text being an afterthought to becoming the forefront of image macros with the introduction of lolcats, but with the image of just any goofy cat and the text kind of being dictated to being nothing but cat speak, advice animals made it so that the image was now equal parts to the text that accompanied it. Not only because it retained the childlike whimsy of having a cute animal as its sole image, but also introducing a rainbow background that according to the original creator of the first advice animal in 2005 was inspired by the royal rainbow in Katamari Damacy, which anything with a gaming background is A-OK -okay to me. But despite the fact that the text was big, bold, and covered half of the image, the image itself, the advice animal itself, still played a key role in the meme. Each one of these numerous examples of advice animals all had their own unique characteristics and storytelling elements. Instead, you would specifically be using a picture of a penguin if you found yourself in a socially awkward situation, or a picture of a black man if you found yourself discriminated or judged based on just your looks, all working together with the text to accompany it in a marriage that made for an excellent image macro. You can even use a bachelorette frog if you want to make some of the grossest memes I've ever seen. This introduction of different characters to sort of be the representation, the personification of the meme that is trying to be evoked by the text became so popular that in my opinion it gave birth to the idea that I don't want to be limited to just one image. I don't want to be limited to just top and bottom text. What if I want to tell like an entire proper story with characters that have like deep layered characteristics? As such, it only became a matter of time before it would give birth to an even more elaborate form of image macro, Doge Lore. Doge Lore, in my opinion, is the ultimate evolution of using an image macro to be able to portray some sort of meme with the image being a character that you're trying to have personify the text that accompanies it. Where with advice animals, you are limited to a few predetermined characters that everybody sort of universally understands. Doge Lore really only has one character in that being Doge. Sure, sometimes there's Cheems and Uncle Murphy and a few other reoccurring Doge lore characters. For the most part, it's just the one dog, morphed, twisted, disguised, and costumed to be whatever character you want to tell whatever story you're trying to tell. The text is longer. The images typically occupy more than one image panel, becoming less of an image macro and becoming more of a short comic book. This allows for even more complex and convoluted characters to be able to portray a meme in whatever circumstance you want it to. You want to make a joke about Steven Seagal being fat yet continuing to star in martial arts movies? Steven Seagal Doge. You want to make a meme about how the Chinese kid at your high school always had really elaborate food while you just had peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? Chinese kid Doge. There are thousands of templates that the subreddit provides for you to be able to create your own little comic book panels to put this wacky dog into uncharacteristic situations. And it's because of that that more than any other character that you see in any meme, Doge has had so many different legs, I feel obligated to put up the spider Doge, even though it creeps me out. You sly dog, you've got me monologuing. As much as I appreciate the evolution of memes to come to the part where people are basically their own comic book characters, putting together entire universes with different characters all on the foundation of making an image macro, let us not forget what we're talking about today. And that's image plus text a formula that is so fundamental to the basis of every single social media app that you can actually see this exact execution 
formed in slightly different ways, but still retaining the origin of the website from which they came. Green text stories are the simple formula of text plus image, much like everything we're talking about today. However, they have their own personality all the same. You can always tell something comes from 4chan because of the color of its background, the fact that the image is always off to the left, the fact that the text sometimes wraps around the image to fill up as much space as possible, and the fact that the text is usually green, indicating that the user is telling some sort of story that you're supposed to read as them. Green text share a unique characteristic in that any post on 4chan generally only allows you to attach one image, which means despite the fact that you can go on these long tangents with line after line describing whatever story or situation you want to share with the internet, you only get one image to try to encompass whatever it is that you're saying, whether it be a short joke or a lengthy story. Therefore, it results in these rather long posts that have you reading through the entire thing with the image only tangentically related. Uh, there's no way I use that word correctly. With the image only being kind of related to the thing going on or needing to encompass the entirety of the story that's being told in that one post. Despite this, green text stories continue to be a fantastic image macro because they'll typically get screenshot and shared onto Reddit, Twitter, Instagram, and where have you else when they're worded quite nicely. Much to the dismay of people on 4chan for having their memes stolen, but that's a conversation for another day. Tumblr would find itself becoming a powerhouse of making these sorts of image macros, despite the fact that it had all the same tools that early Twitter and even 4chan did with its image boards, because of the hyper niche fandoms that found themselves making communities of the same specific interest, there resulted a ton of memes that would only come from one specific TV show or anime or manga that you wouldn't find elsewhere, and Tumblr's ability to have people comment on other users posts, adding a joke that might have not been there before, and then getting screen grabbed to be reshared on Tumblr over and over again with other people adding captions that added their own images, growing these jokes larger and larger, it became a perfect place for people to be able to share these image macros in a manner that would become additive, like a snake eating its own tail and then becoming double the snake. It's simple math. Instagram would push for video with the popularization of TikTok and short form vertical content. One of the features that it added was the ability to post a still image and then add music to it, turning it into a video despite the fact that it was still just a still image with text. This allowed for people who were scrolling through videos to find image macros of still images with music playing in the background, creating effectively the same meme, but now one that could be inserted into vertical scrolling video which I would argue is arguably a step back and the music kind of deters from your ability to be able to read the text, but whatever, Instagram's never really been the best at this. TikTok is self-explanatory. Obviously with vertically scrolling video, it isn't difficult to take text and put it over not only an image, but sometimes a short video that allows you to move around and really sort of personify whatever it is that you wish that the image could show. You can even use a short video if you want to. But one of the most interesting things that I've started to see lately is people taking screenshots with the comment section open so that you can see just enough of the video to understand what they're responding to, but then also see the funniest comment that somebody else made, resulting in a sort of additive image macro where it's like a reaction to the video made using just the tools available for you in TikTok in a showcase case of like MacGyver-esque meme making. Twitter is arguably one of the most recognizable styles of text plus image because you can always see the user profile picture and their at username to be able to see that this obviously came from Twitter. The color in the background is iconic, the font is iconic, but Twitter also has a few tools built into the website that other websites don't necessarily have, allowing you to make very different sorts of memes. You can tweet out something that's a little bit risque or you might regret later, and you can denote this by deleting the meme, which people will then screenshot. And just that little line afterwards saying that this tweet has been deleted, it makes the tweet 500 times funnier, knowing that somebody sent that out to the internet and then at some point decided, you know what? I don't want this associated with my name. I'm gonna delete it only for it to be captured for eternity by somebody else. Twitter has a built-in feature to translate foreign languages to English 
which makes it hilarious because you can now capture memes that are in another culture, a completely different language, translate it to English, and then not only be able to appreciate what otherwise would have been a funny text plus image, but a funny text plus image that would have been gatekept for you if not for inventions like modern language translation. I wanted to jump in front of a train, but a couple was deep kissing and I didn't want to ruin the mood, so I gave up. I'll go home. Not, like, think about the different angles that this takes. This was written in Japanese. So you know that not only is this a funny meme that somebody could have written in English, but you immediately know that because it was translated from Japanese, it has this whole different aura of having to recognize that the person writing it comes from a Japanese culture. And so there's this extra level of funny that not only was this dude so socially awkward that he couldn't end his life because he was worried it might inconvenience someone else, but it doubles down on the whole notion of Japanese people not wanting to inconvenience other people in public, and it becomes twice as funny just by clicking the translate button. Foot jobs literally are not real. I think y'all just need to get off the internet. To which someone responds, who's at toe respecter, by the way, he who has not tasted grapes says sour. Think about the levels to this. It would be one thing for someone to reply with a tweet like that, acting philosophical to somebody else's quote about foot jobs, but this guy didn't write it out. This guy has a screen grab of a different tweet reply from two years earlier. He went to extra lengths to be able to provide an image macro, a screen grab from years ago, just to show how at the ready he is. And then you have the extra layer of his user handle being at toe respecter, adding to the foot job joke, there's so many levels that can only be accomplished on Twitter. It's beautiful to see. I hope you guys have gained a deeper appreciation for the humble combination of image plus text. This is an art form that may have been completely lost to the internet if things shifted a different way, and yet instead finds itself in more iterations on modern internet than it ever has before. I anticipate there are probably even more examples that I have missed, and I'm excited to see any that you can think of down in the comments. Please hit the subscribe button and like if you enjoyed this video. Big thank you to the patrons scrolling in the back for supporting the show, and I will catch you guys in tomorrow's video. Peace.